Welcome. This is Luna. She's sleeping and I can't imagine why because today is going to be a very exciting day. May I present to you the NVIDIA the NVIDIA RTX 3090, the beefiest graphics card in existence right now. We're not going to be doing any gaming. Today we are talking about creative applications. In case you're new here, hi, I'm Sir Wade. I'm a CG artist, an animator, a visual effects artist. I use 3D applications and that's kind of what I'm looking at this for. What I want to know is how this stacks up for really complex rendering, modeling, animation, all the stuff when it comes to 3D workflows and actual content creation with something this insane. This also isn't exactly a review because I need some time to figure that out, test it with my 2080 Ti and another computer that has dual 2080 Ti's, which at the time I thought was crazy powerful. And it was. but. Now, not so much. So today we open this up, we'll test it out, we'll try some different renderers, Maya, Blender, all that good stuff. We have a lot to look at and I don't wanna waste any time, so let's get started. Also, this video is not sponsored by NVIDIA, but they did send me the card early so I can make this video and test it with you. So, thank you to NVIDIA for that. All right. <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. It's flipping huge. Just kidding absolutely massive. We won't spend long on the design because you probably already know this, but this fan sucks up air from the bottom, cools through there. This other fan underneath pulls air in, cools out the back of the computer, which is nice. I'll be really interested to see how testing with the hot air coming out of this, probably around your CPU, that'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. Four ports in the back with the giant heat exhaust, three display ports, one HDMI. I don't think we need to talk about the design, I'm just gonna pop it in and let's get to work. Also comes with this, adapts into the two eight pins, so come out here. Also right here, nicely covered, there is a secret little door. That is for the NVLink, since I believe this is the only card in the series that will support the NVLink bridge. And I think there's a new bridge for it. So that's if you wanted to combine two of these in a computer and double the 24 gigabytes of video memory. <laughs> I don't know who's gonna be using that, but the option's there. Okay, so quick note on the 3090, if you're not wondering about it fitting into your computer case, you should. <laughs> I actually didn't think it was gonna fit in my PC. I had to pull out a couple little hard drive bays that were not in use so I could kinda get it in there, plug it in. It's all good, it works fine, but, but make sure you've got some space in your case. The 3090 is plugged in, it's time to see what this can do. So we're gonna start off in Maya, a software that I'm super comfortable in. I've been using this for eight years. I taught Maya back when I worked at DreamWorks. Lot of texture detail, a lot of really nice geometry. Pretty high resolution, this is a solid model. So the first thing we're going to look at is 3D rendering with Arnold instead of Maya. So for anyone who doesn't know, it has a CPU and a GPU option available. We're gonna look at the CPU version first. So we're gonna render 1024 by 1024. Samples here are pretty solid, this should look good. All right, so I'm going to enable the real-time renderer. By the way, a lot of people didn't know that Maya can do this. Maya has this Arnold real-time renderer built in, and it's been there since like 2017. It's, it's doing its thing, it's taking a little bit, but the idea is for you to be working in your scene and make quick adjustments and changes and be able to see an accurate representation of what your work is going to be at the end of the final render. So this is all about speed and iteration. I mean, we can see the gist of it. It's very noisy. Um, if I were looking for high detail areas like this reflection here, I'm having a hard time seeing if this is blown out or if some of this is just not rendered properly. Oh, it's done. Never mind. Okay, yeah, so this is CPU rendering. And CPU, like, it, it, I have a really beefy CPU, so I'm actually using a Threadripper 3990X. So this thing's already no joke, but I wouldn't use this for anything, obviously, because it's super noisy, super grainy. That's normal for me. Maya is a pretty single-threaded, processor-heavy application when it comes to working in the viewport, so rendering in the viewport with the CPU and trying to work, I just tried to select this and focus on it, and I'm just sitting here waiting for it. It's actually kind of annoying. By the way, this is why I'm really excited about the potential speed boost of the GPU and just having the 3090 take this over. I'm not sure what that's gonna be like. I'm really excited to find out because this is a very common thing. To have a really, really heavy scene that's got a lot of detail, a lot of stuff going on, and I wanted to make a change to the camera so I could render closer, and here I am just kind of waiting, doing nothing, wasting time. This is, I mean, this is illustrating it perfectly. I have to stop the real-time renderer. I can click on this, I can zoom in, and maybe that's, let's try that angle. Actually, let's, now I can either hit the refresh button or hit real-time, oh, depth of field. I forgot to change depth of field. Actually, I think there's a turntable enabled, so if I, move through the timeline. Yep, okay. And I think we should probably just get on with it and see how it does because I think everyone gets the gist. It's actually doing a fairly good job showing me something, but it's not giving me anything that I could actually use as final product and it is taking way too long for me to iterate. Like I wouldn't be using this. I would just turn this off. I'm done testing that. Let's go to GPU because 
I'm starting to get annoyed. Arnold GPU. To make sure this is fully working, I'm gonna go to system, make sure, yes, GPU is set. Okay, now we also have the option to turn on denoising, which I'm gonna hold off on. We're gonna see what that looks like in a second. That should even make this faster, but let's just see without denoising how we do. So I'm gonna give that a second to compile shaders and do its thing. And here we go. So let me just jump ahead to another frame. And nice. And actually when it comes to noise, it seems a lot less noisy. Interesting. It does look a lot more final. Like we could probably actually use this for something. It's not like fuzzy along the edges. It's still got like the stair step aliasing that the denoiser might take out. Arnold renders are, they're pretty, they're accurate, but they're noisy. And that's the biggest thing I feel like everyone struggles with. So I can actually turn on the denoiser. Let's try that. <laughs> oh God, what the? What? <laughs> Hold up. You saw that, right? So briefly, two types of like mentalities when you're rendering. There's the one when you're trying to get the final image, and then there's like the active workflow where you're working on something and you want to see the results of it very quickly. And you may be rendering, but you're not rendering for a final product, you're rendering to see the final details so you can change them and keep making adjustments, right? That's the part we spend the most time. So we'll go to the beauty pass, no denoiser, frame 80. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so again, this is GPU, no denoising. It's fast, I get the gist, it's actually really nice, but there is a lot of noise. It's very sparkly here on his shoulder, this metal, especially the metal, the really reflective bits. It's a skylight, okay, so it's indirect lighting. So indirect lighting, we're dealing with specular reflections, very noisy, it'll get there. I'm sure it'll take like a minute or so to have a final image, and it's getting better over time, but we're waiting quite a bit and it's still very noisy. And even when it finishes, like we're at 100% right now as it finals the image, and I'm still seeing a lot of sparkles around here. Go to frame 81, which is a different frame, switch to denoising. Let's go again. <laughs> oh my, did you, okay, yeah. The noise is gone in like two seconds. Now it's gonna continue calculating and like refining the image, but holy sh <laughs> Okay, uh, so here's the question. Here's the real question is, can we work in real time? In fact, let me try with no denoising to work in the viewport. Okay, so once again, I am in regular GPU mode. I am not using the denoiser. The fact that I can move around, I can grab stuff, I can, an insane improvement. And like, look how fast it goes. The right half of my screen right now is all CPU. The left half is GPU. That's incredible. Like, that would work. Let's go denoiser. <laughs> it's like done already. I don't have to do, I don't like have to wait at all. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold up. One Mississippi, two Miss, two. Two seconds. Two seconds and it looks like nice. Holy crap. In case you're wondering what the heck is going on, this is, this is the new Ampere architecture in the RTX graphics cards. What it's doing is it's sampling a collection of pixels and it's using AI to figure out what should kind of go in between with whatever information it's got. And then it keeps refining that over time as it continues sampling the points and making it like truly accurate. But good God, it does a good job. That's just insane. Ooh. Ooh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Everybody's testing this for 8K gaming, right? I don't know anyone who's gonna be gaming in 8K anytime soon, but let's do something similar. Do you know anybody who's gonna be rendering in 8K anytime soon? I mean, cause it's gonna be us. We're gonna, I mean, if they're gonna be gaming in 8K, we're gonna be watching movies in 8K, someone's gotta make the stuff in 8K. So let's bump this resolution up. This, I'm going off the book. I'm going off script. NVIDIA sent some of their recommended stuff of like, hey, like bump up the quality, do some of this stuff. They didn't say we could do this, but they didn't say we couldn't. So let's go from a 1K square to uh, something a little juicier. It doesn't have an 8K option. So I guess we'll start at 4K. Go, 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 go. Rendering in 4K on the GPU. We're probably gonna be really zoomed in because I don't think it'll auto adjust. So now it's gonna take a sec. Can't. <laughs> oh my god! What the fuck it <laughs> I can't believe it's actually working. I entire I I 100% was kind of thinking Maya was gonna crash. Solid. Like look at that quality. We're gonna have to revisit this, and we're gonna have to do some 4K stuff. 
out of Maya, out of Blender. We'll come back to that. I mean, at this point I'm limited by the texture detail. Can we work in a 4K environment in real time? Spin, come on, update, oh my god. Oh my god, that denoising going to work. So it definitely takes longer than two seconds of 4K, which, duh. <laughs> but uh, the fact, okay, there it is. It, what did that take, like five, six seconds? Holy crap, 12 seconds. That took 12 seconds. What the hell? <laughs> Can it do 8K though? I mean, turn on the renderer. Fly, my pretty. Go, 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 go. You can do it, I believe in you. 8K. We have a timer running? All right, whatever, whatever the timer says, I can see it. It's not, it's not denoised yet, but I can see it rendering actively in 8K. Oh, did it happen? Oh, I think it happened. Oh, it happened. My mind is just exploding. Like, this is crazy. Like, I, re I need to know what you're thinking. I really wanna know, like, what you're thinking. So if you are also using this workflow, I would like to know your thoughts. So please leave me a comment, because we gotta talk about this. This is just, this is just ridiculous. But I'm an animator, and I'm often not rendering, which requires fast playback in the viewport. All right, display, heads up display, frame rate. Let's go ahead, bottom right corner right here, if you look here, you can see the frame rate which it's not gonna give you an accurate number until I actually do something, so. All right, I'm gonna right click on the playback and go to Cache Playback Preferences. Turn it on and we're gonna turn preferred mode to viewport hardware cache, because we wanna use our GPU hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump that up and say that you're allowed to use like 85% of RAM. I gave it like 80 something percent and it cached from 240 to 770. That's a lot of frames. Why are we playing at 120 frames per second? We're playing at like 24. So I'm getting a solid 24 frames per second, and it's trying to go above it. It's trying to play faster than 24 frames per second. So that's, I mean, that's amazing. That's what we'd do for film. If we were doing games, we could do 30 FPS. That's perfect. I mean, 24 for film, 30 for games. That's it. I mean, that's, that's, your, that's your workflow. If you're animating, let's see how fast it goes. If I just say playback speed, play every frame, go as fast as you can. Okay, so it wants to give us between 61, I saw it dip to 57, ooh. Okay, so between roughly 60, 63, up to 65, 67. Holy crap, this thing wants, I mean, this is fantastic. We've got this going with all this geometry and all this stuff, and then you've also got Substance Painter open. Substance Painter is a surfacing tool, texturing tool. This is taking up memory. This scene is taking up memory. Does it care? <laughs> no, we're still playing at 60 frames per second because it's got enough memory to cache everything in there without a problem. I make a change. Actually, I'll make a change back here. So let's just say he is now uh, smelling his armpit really aggressively. There it is. See how quick that was? It's cached, it's done. I can go back and forth and uh, it doesn't care because there's enough GPU RAM to go around. That 24 gigs is not a problem. Are a Blender user and you're wondering how this stacks up the benchmark, I ran the benchmark and I crushed the benchmark. This is the fastest benchmark that Blender has, I think, ever seen. There's nothing, there's nothing beyond this faster than this. Now that's all well and good. Let's see how it actually works when we're working in real time. So we're in Blender. We've got Blender Man and I'm gonna just go straight to Optics 3090 and I'm gonna tell this to go rendered. Am I in cycles? I'm in cycles. GPU, uh, I don't think I have a denoising turned on actually. Okay, so that's that's looking pretty good. Uh, that's already really fast, but like we saw in Maya, we got a little bit of noise to deal with. Pretty normal to do, but let's go ahead and go to denoising viewport and let's set that to optics. <laughs> oh my god! No, no! Oh my god! No. Preferences, optics is on. I'm gonna turn on the denoising right away just because I wanna see what it looks like. Guns blazing, here we go. Ready, here we go. Are you ready? I'm not. Rendered. One, two, three, four, five. Right, here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. 
I'm dying. I'm dead. Oh my. I think it's done. Jeez, you see that? I can just zoom in. I can just zoom. And now let's just leave the camera view. Okay, what the heck? What the heck? This is obscene. This is not allowed. This is actually in this is actually insane. It almost has like a painterly style to it as it, the AI is kind of processing the pixels in between. Like if I move, watch your face. Like it's like it's interesting. Like it almost looks like a Van Gogh painting as it kind of like approximates the colors and refines over time. All right, I'm just gonna take a material, I'm just gonna mess with it. Let's just take her her base color, diffuse skin, and let's just throw a Voronoi texture on it, just for fun, just to see how quickly we can adjust things. Now she's Miss Unicorn. Better yet, let's go for some lighting. Let's just go straight for the emission, and I'm just gonna replace, there we go. Holy crap, it's so fast. It's so fast. Let's go back to CUDA. Let's just go back to CUDA. I mean, I guess we'll just use the 3090. 3090, CUDA only. I mean, this is, I mean, this is still fast. I mean, this is, this is closer to what I would expect from just the Blender stuff. This is a lot more reasonable. This is a, a lot more normal. It's still fast. Like it's still doing a good job. Like it's only a couple of seconds I have to wait to see like the freckles and the texture, the colors. Again, super, super beefy CPU. Blender actually does a really good job of taking advantage of my CPU, the Threadripper. But, I mean, you can see the difference. This is the Threadripper, it's a 64 core processor. It is made for this kind of thing. And it is, I mean, it feels like it's chugging comparatively. Like this feels so slow. Keep in mind, this is one of the most, I think this might be one of the most powerful processors that you can get right now. For this kind of work and i a week ago was like it's so fast it's a snail and let's be fair optics with no denoising here we go so if you don't want to let the ai do its thing faster it's still faster i can already see the colors of the freckles takes a couple of seconds but we got it works for me it's definitely faster but let's go ahead and turn on the optics de <laughs> it's a joke it's, it's honestly a joke. Like, I, I don't even know what to say. There's nothing else I can show you. Like, what? <laughs> and let's zoom out so there's more geometry. Like, look, look how quickly. It's so, and like, you can see the detail. Like, if I zoom in, you can see the reflections. You can see the little bits of color inside of the freckles. Like, there's, like, these rings of color. Which, again, is just my own weird texture stuff that I did. But, like, look, you can see the individual hairs. Like... That it's not even worth discussing. It's not even worth discussing because there's there's nothing that can compare with this. We're going to have to do more testing. We're gonna have to try other applications, other renderers, different settings. We're gonna have to see the speed differences between this card, between the other cards that have come out. We've got some comparisons to do. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, if you wanna see more animation content, anything for digital artists, CG creation, things like that, character animation. I'm actually live twice a week on Twitch, so if you wanna come hang out, ask questions, we can do all of this live. Or if you don't wanna miss these videos, make sure to hit subscribe, thumbs up if you enjoyed this. It does help, I would really appreciate it so more people can see this insanity and ring the notification bell so you don't miss new uploads. Finally, if you would like to support the channel, I'll link to my Patreon down below, and with that, I have nothing else to show. If you just bought a graphics card, I hope you can uh, go return it and get yourself a 3090 or a something new because these new cards are insane. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps. Whatever research you're doing, good luck out there. Hopefully this one doesn't sell out in like a day. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sir Wade and I will see you in the next video.